everybody, welcome to Abishat. Tom's here in the studio working on some editing. Thought I'd make a quick video for you guys. So, let's take a look. Alright, so we've been a little busy lately. Schedules have been a bit hectic. We haven't been able to put out an Aperture Chat episode in a while. So I thought I would take couple of minutes and walk you through some editing I've been doing with, from a recent shoot I did with a wonderful model named Sky. Uh, I'll put her link down below in the uh, in the, the description for her model mayhem profile in case you want to work with her. So I've picked three here. If we go over to the library module here you'll see I've got three uh, great pictures of Sky uh, that we're gonna we're gonna run through real quick. So we've got one of her and I just, we, it took us forever to get this, uh, you'll see the uh, stones falling here. That took a couple of shots. Uh, there's another one of Sky just kind of down here. I really love this coat. And then one where I took out the 50 millimeter and we were just playing around with me shooting at f1.8, uh, which is just something I like to do for portraits because I love just how narrow the depth of field is. So we've got three very different shots here, three very different lightings but all from the same shoot and we're just gonna I'm just gonna walk you through some edits here so we'll come over here to the first one with the next one we'll go over to the develop module now you can see here that I'm working with a flash but I'm still shooting at 100 at 1 80th of a second I'm shooting at f7 1 because I really wanted some more contrast and ISO 200 I could have shot obviously 1 1 60th of a second at ISO 100 um, but you know, that's just work, working around in the exposure triangle. I was shooting at ISO 200. The Canon 60 does a great job at 200, 400, 640. I don't even notice it until over 1,000. So I wasn't too worried about that. But I'm um, running on my Sigma 2470 So because I'm in the studio. And we were shooting in the short length of the studio so we could use the brick wall. And so I couldn't use the 7200, which is what I would prefer to use because I like... 85 to 100 millimeters for portraits, uh, but it just wasn't wasn't happening today. But anyway, we're coming in here, and so I've got above her, I've got a seven foot parabolic umbrella, which has given us lots of real nice soft light coming down and a strip light from the side, but it's there's still a lot of shadow in here, and it. And, there's a place and a time for that, but I want to really want to get more light onto her face. So we're gonna get in here with the adjustment brush, and it. I think my default is at 0.42. Um, we'll make sure the auto mask is on so that we don't light up her hair too much more. I'm gonna come in here and and paint into her face a little bit, and it looks like four tenths of a stop really isn't all I need. So let's. Push that just a little more. Not quite a full stop because a full stop is going to be a little too much. It just kind of doesn't look like she's actually hiding there. So let's go for like three quarters of a stop. So yeah, 0.79 is fine. That brings up enough light in there that I'm happy with that. Um, and if you look down here, the I mean this was still an 80th of a second, so you see a little bit of motion but she's still perfectly still, so you definitely get that combination motion stillness there. One thing we didn't notice until after, she has a little bit of um, lipstick on her teeth because we've been shooting for a while. And this is going to require us going to Photoshop, so we'll come back to this in a minute. Let's see, is there any other big distractions in the picture? That's the first thing I really look for in editing. Is there any big distractions? I do see one. It's actually a hole in the brick here. It has nothing to do with her, so I'm going to come in and... Uh, in case you're wondering, it's the uh, left and right brackets can very quickly adjust your size here. I'm going to come down and just kind of match, find a match that makes the brick look okay. We'll come back out. Now there's no distraction in the brick there. And that's my big thing is I'm looking for distractions in the picture first. So I don't really see anything that's distracting, taking away from looking at her and the stones like bogeys in the background, as, as I've heard it described. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to edit in Photoshop. And this will launch Photoshop, which I should already have running in the background. But um, 
I have my Lightroom set up to accept the file back from Photoshop as a PSD. Um, it defaults to a TIFF. Some people like that. But I'm coming in here and um, I'll talk about this more later, but I've got a um, action I've created called frequency separation. There's lots of ways to do it. Um, you can definitely go Google that. I'll put a link. I mean, maybe someday I'll put up my, my frequency separation, um, how I make that as a video. But you'll notice I hit the button and it looks like nothing happened. But that's not entirely true. Um, you can see down here there are now four layers. And so like, if I turn off the two detail layers, you'll see it's a little looser. I mean, if I come back here, you'll see the original picture. So it's non-destructive. But the low pass does a really small blur. And the details, the two detail layers. I use two. A lot of people only use one detail layer. Um, I use a low and a high detail layer. Um, I just think it gives me a better product in the end. Some people disagree with me. So we'll come down here to the, well, we'll zoom in because the teeth is what I wanted to work on. So as you can see, the, the two detail layers give two very different amounts of detail. That gives a very soft kind of low detail, and this gives a little bit higher detail but when you put them together you get a lot of you get that that refined detail back so what we're gonna do we're gonna come in here and we're gonna grab the paintbrush and if you hold alt you'll pick up the color we're just gonna pick up the color that's right near there I'm just basically gonna patch it in a little bit we're gonna make sure we get the right colors in there actually want to get something a little Neutral. And we're going to just kind of paint this in here. All right. And so when we put the details back over, now, you're going to be like, Tom, that detail is horrible. Like, if you on this layer, we can fix that. We can come in here and add a, where is it? A, not adjustment layer, a layer mask. With reveal all, and we're going to take the link off. Uh, you'll get the same thing if you just come down here and hit the layer mask button. Now, since this is a layer mask, I can come in and say I only want it to be half strong here. Make sure I'm on the mask. And so anywhere that's white, we actually might need something a little stronger than that. Anywhere that's white on the mask will come through just fine, and then anything that's black will be hidden. And any shade of gray in between will give you a certain amount of detail coming through. So I don't want to lose all the detail in her teeth. But I want to take some of it away. And we'll do the same thing here. Layer, layer mask, reveal all, unlink. I just like to unlink. It's not totally necessary to unlink, but I like to. So we'll come in here and we'll knock out a lot of that detail. Not all of it. Not enough that you're going to be like, oh, well, you took the detail out. Um, another thing we can do is we can sneak in here. Now, that if you take out everything but the um, low pass, you will see, now you'll see that I've kind of hidden the, the details there because of the mask. Uh, but you can see there is color information in this. And some people say you have to rip the color information out. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, but there are times where it is nice to rip out the color information. So I'm going to grab the brush. And we're just going to highlight the inside of her mouth here. And we'll have to clean that up a little bit. But. So obviously I don't want to take it out of her lips. So we'll take that out. And that should be fine. And in this case, we're going to image adjustments. Where's my desaturate? There it is. We're going to desaturate, and we're going to do the same thing on this layer. Saturate. And so when we put the low pass back in underneath, there's no real red highlight in here. But you still have red reflection because obviously the light would not give you perfectly white teeth in this scenario. So you want to have that combination where you're looking at it and going, okay, 
what I see here is exactly what I want it to be. So when we zoom back out, the teeth look fine. You don't see the um, lipstick on the teeth, but they don't look like we've gone in and just painted white teeth in there. The saturation's right. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of detail that's gone in there. Just looking for the obvious things that are going to get my, get someone's attention if they're looking for it. So I'm happy with where this is right now. So we'll save that and send it back to Lightroom. Now, is this saving a very large PSD file? Because it's still at full resolution, and now it has four layers in it. So it's basically four times as much information that it's looking at. And when we come back to Lightroom and look at our library, you'll see that there are now two copies of this file and then the only one's labeled edit and one is not one's the original raw file so we're gonna come in here we'll look at our and we'll just go right to this one I think I'll just do two pictures this is turning out to be a much longer video than I expected I wanted to do this was I have my nifty 50 my 51 8 um, and you can see we shot all the way out at 1 8 which gives you this razor thin razor razor thin like I rocked backwards ever so slightly so like this eye is what I wanted to be in focus and it's her eyelashes because as I took the picture I rocked just a touch back to adjust and um, and some people can just do it they just boom that's what they do but when you when you're looking at it full size I mean it's it's so little that that's here that's off that and you know, the eyebrow is in focus and the eyelashes are in focus so you're not being distracted by that but look at it her shoulder and she's flat against the wall here her shoulder is already out of focus and that's that's what I like that's that's why I like shooting at 1.8 that's why I like doing these really narrow depth of field portraits and this is what I really really love doing so we're going to get back in here we've cleaned you know we found we, we saw that earlier and we cleaned that up so I don't have to worry about cleaning up her teeth this time. There's really not much I need to do here. I'm going to look for some obvious bogeys, if there are any, and not really seeing any in the background, not seeing any in the foreground. There might be a couple of spots in here where I might jump in and use a really small brush just to say, okay, we're going to grab that and that. And just the ones that really kind of jump out. We might have to go back and forth between full zoom and... You know, there aren't really too many bogeys jumping out at me here. Maybe grab you and you, and that should probably. Yeah. I mean, that, that, those are the big things I was looking for that we needed to just knock out. And I am happy with this picture. So. I don't always go all the way into Photoshop and do a lot of work. Sometimes all it needs is just a little tweaking in Lightroom and, and we call it good. So that's me editing a couple of pictures, one very heavily with frequency separation and one real quick in Lightroom. They both make great, phenomenal pictures, especially when you have a great subject. And I just wanted to share that with you guys as to you know my editing process a little bit because I've been doing a lot of that recently and I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you tune back in we're gonna uh, be back to do an after chat very soon so I just wanted to get something up here for you guys though in the meantime so keep shooting and if you have any questions put them below and hopefully I can answer them for you uh, we've had a couple of great discussions recently with the with things like camera lenses and stuff uh, over the last couple of weeks through the through YouTube. Um, and if you want to check out, make sure you subscribe so you see when we put up new videos. Uh, remember, this is the new Bucket Castle Productions YouTube channel, so you're also going to see our film work, and you're going to see uh, some other little bits that are coming about. So I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe, check us out on Facebook, and I'll see you later.